these are genuinely three separate activities. Hey, so this is how I think I got into Harvard. I've seen a lot of videos online, but I think they miss out on the full story. Every one of these videos seems to be split, like missing ECs but giving stats and essays, or you know, having all three but not giving the Common App honors. So I'm here to put an end to this madness. Today, I'm walking you through my stats, honors, ECs, and essays. So all four, um, and I'm gonna put them either right here or right here somewhere. And just a quick disclaimer, I don't know what got me into Harvard. This is purely a subjective experience and analysis. But if you do find this helpful, hey, I mean, I wouldn't mind if you subscribed because that tells me that people want more videos like this one. So stats, four years of keeping grades up, studying, and then the SATs and APs. Um, first, I'll reveal my stats and then give my analysis on this. So I had approximately a 4.6 weighted GPA on a 4.0 scale, um, and my school gives a four out of four for an A in a normal class and then a five for AP classes. And also my school didn't rank, but I informally knew I was ranked number one for weighted GPA in my class. Um, I took the ACT with the essay section, um, I got a 36 out of 36 composite score. Um, and this score consisted of a 36 on reading, 36 on English, 36 on science, and then a 35 on math. I also got an 11 out of 12 on the ACT essay or writing portion. And I know a bunch of people right now are probably thinking, wait a second, I didn't take the writing or essay portion, do I need that? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in the analysis portion in just a little bit. Um, as for my course load, in my freshman year, I took AP Psychology. In my sophomore year, I took um, AP Environmental Science, AP Calc AB, AP Bio, AP United States History, and AP Wang. In my junior year, I took AP Computer Science Principles, AP Physics C, so both uh, Mechanics and E&M, uh, AP Econ, again, both Macro Econ and Micro Econ, AP Calc BC, AP English Red, AP Math Science, AP Math Science, and then one honors social studies course called Cultural Anthropology. Um, and then in my senior year, right now, I'm taking AP Statistics, AP Writing Common Politics, and AP Chemistry 301, I'm taking two honors courses, AP Chemistry 301, social studies and English called Global Conflict and Survey of American Literature, respectively. I did take three years of a foreign language, which was Spanish, hola, but to the fourth level, this was uh, because I took a year in middle school, so it was uh, Spanish one in middle school and then all the way to Spanish four, so technically the fourth level. I did two years of arts by taking choir at my school. Obviously, I took other classes, but these were some of the most impactful and most rigorous ones, which is why I just decided to tell you about them. I took plenty of AP exams for those AP courses, and I'm not going to say exactly which exams I took because that would take way too long, but I think I got around nine or ten fives uh, on the exam scores. So now my analysis on this. So as for my course load, I think I genuinely didn't try to become valedictorian or take the most APs in my class. I think that's like a really common thing that I, I've seen in other videos as well that like, hey, you have to like be valedictorian, you have to take the most classes. Um, I just ended up being the person who did that by challenging myself. So I think the mindset there is rather than going in and saying, I'm going to take the most, just try to challenge yourself. Um, because my school is considered to be like very competitive. It's a large public school that's very competitive. Um, but I think forgetting about any of that competition aspect and instead focusing on myself worked out really great. Um, and I know there's people at my school who took like math classes over the summer to try to like skip ahead and skip directly into Calc AB or whatnot. Um, like I didn't do any of that. And I think honestly, it ended up working out great. Um, so I'd say don't overcompete in the AP or IB course load area because it's just going to be more stressful and um, you're going to end up taking AP classes for subjects that you're not actually interested in. Um, and so that's my biggest advice. Challenge yourself in the subjects and areas where you're actually interested in. Um, and then as for the test score, I did go for the ACT because my school was offering it and also because the ACT has a science section and I happen to love science. Um, I made a video on why the ACT is better than the SAT. So you can go check that out in the description below. As for the, the question you've all been waiting for, why did I take the ACT with writing? I have no clue. Um, my school actually just required it. I think my score for ACT writing like the essay was in the 99th percentile. So I guess it just boosted my confidence that I'm at least a decent writer. By the way, I, I guess I made an entire video on how I got a 36 on the ACT as well. So 
you can go check that out in the description below. I'm going to be saying that a lot. Uh, just go check the description below for a bunch of links and resources. OK, lastly, public school, lots of people. Um, I don't have much analysis on that other than I think I had some diverse experiences growing up in a pretty large, diverse school district um, and living up in, in the suburbs pretty much my entire life. So now for the big kicker, the honor section. OK, OK. Number one on my list was an international award in 11th grade or my junior year, winning the Regeneron Young Scientist Award in 2022 at the International Science and Engineering Fair or ISEF. ISEF is this huge science competition. It's the largest pre-collegiate science fair where high schoolers around the world bring amazing science research projects. In my junior year in May of 2022, I competed at ISEF and won first place in my category, which was biomedical engineering and also won the $50,000 Regeneron Young Scientist Award. Um, number two on my list was also an international award. It was being named one of Time Magazine's 25 Most Influential Teens. Number three was a national award in 12th grade, being a Research Science Institute Scholar, uh, also known as RSI. I also made an entire video about RSI and also about ISEF, so I guess go check the description. I there's going to be so many links in there. Anyway, every year, uh, MIT and the Center for Excellence in Education bring around 80 high schoolers to do science research in Cambridge, Massachusetts for six weeks over the summer. This is an amazing summer science research program, but is highly selective. Um, number four was a national award in 10th and 11th grade. I won uh, first place at the National Junior Science and Humanities Symposium for two years in a row. Um, in 10th grade, it was the biomedical sciences category. And in 11th grade, it was the medical category. Um, both years, I won a $12,000 scholarship for my oral presentation. Anyway, number five was a national award, which was receiving my Eagle Scout rank. I was a Boy Scout for about nine years, first starting in elementary school as a Cub Scout, and I finally got my Eagle rank in my junior year of high school. All right, so let's just go straight down here. Number one was student uh, science research in 10th and 11th grade. So this included both independent research and a software engineering internship where I did research. And so as a part of this research, this was the one where I won the $50,000 top award at the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair. And I also got a first author preprint and working towards publication on that. Uh, number two was the Research Science Institute, which was in 12th grade. And I was selected as an RSI 2022 scholar to conduct research at MIT. Um, I developed deep learning models for brain tumor growth and uh, also wrote a first author preprint for this research project. Um, my 30C was a student research assistant at my local Oregon Health and Science University from my freshman year to present, actually. Um, it's a computational pathology research, and I published two peer-reviewed research papers as a third and fifth author. Um, and this was uh, one of the projects that I won the national JSHS first place with. Um, and I made an entire video about how to do research, uh, what are the various competitions, how to get published, how to find research opportunities in the description below. So go check that out after uh, finishing this video. Number four is making YouTube videos about Discord, making Discord servers and making Discord bots. These are genuinely three separate activities, but just because of the space, I really had to like merge them into one because they're all about Discord kind of, and they're all like online. Um, so if you don't already know, I have a second channel with about 95,000 subscribers. Actually, I think it's 98,000 now, but um, I post videos about the social media platform called Discord. Um, and I also made bots on Discord and Discord servers. And these were um, very successful. Like it's this has kind of been a project for me since middle school, really. Um, and so over time, we've kind of got hundreds of thousands of users on these Discord bots and Discord servers. So been a really big, big project. Um, number five was my nonprofit organization, the Samyak Science Society. Um, and this was also, I think, technically since eighth grade, but the common app doesn't allow you to like list middle school type stuff. So I just put nine through 12. Um, we've mentored over 3000 students now through STEM workshops in person and online. Um, and this has been 
really one of my biggest passion uh, projects in high school um, and, and like really, really trying to reach as many students as possible through this. Like, as you can probably tell through some of my other ECs, um, like about science research, I'm really passionate about science and STEM. And so I wanted to give back through this. And that's that's really what this number five EC was about. Um, number six was Boy Scouts. So I led about 90 to 100 scouts in our troop as senior patrol leader. Um, I organized various campouts and events, including some, you know, fundraisers and um, service projects, things like that. Scouting has been a pretty big part of who I am. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about it later. But I even wrote an essay about uh, some parts of scouting. Um, and so for my Eagle project, I built a bee pollinator habitat. Um, number seven was track and field. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but basically I ran the 800 meter and four by four relay. Um, number eight was speaking and STEM activism. I'll link my website in the description if you're interested in hearing more about this EC, but basically this activity included all of the speaking events that I go to and that I'm invited to speak about because I, again, I really love to promote the importance of STEM education. Um, and so yeah, that's what this EC was about. Number nine was speech and debate. I earned the Academic All-American Award in my senior year, um, which is like the top 2% point earners or something like that. I help teach underclassmen um, at our school about speech and debate skills after school uh, about twice a week now. And I've been doing speech and debate for four years. I really like it. My events are um, this is, I guess, just for the random debaters and speechers watching this video right now. But uh, my events are Lincoln Douglas impromptu and radio commentary. And then finally, my 10th activity was really just like more of a hobby, like fun type of passion thing, which is choir. So I've been doing some form of choir since third grade. Um, and yeah, this has been both like a hobby that I do outside of school and a classroom activity since I've been part of my school's concert choir for two years. Um, and now the analysis. So I think my ECs, I really didn't try to like craft them in a certain way. They just came together to tie a cohesive story about me. Like this is who I am. Um, and I think ranking these activities was incredibly hard because each of them is really important to me. I had to cut about three to four activities out. I had to combine like three of those activities into that one discord one. Um, and so I think it was really just about choosing what was most important to me. That's uh, what my advice would be to anybody who's like going through this process is try to choose the activities that are most important to you. Um, and that being said, I think my research was the most impressive and also the most important to me. I have, again, multiple graduate level peer reviewed research papers and have won the top awards at some science fairs. And I think that's what's shown through in this EC section, especially because of my recommendations, which kind of validated and backed this up. Uh, my first was my Common App personal statement. And so I chose the prompt about experiencing a period of growth in your life. And I wrote about how my experiences competing in science since a young age shaped me. Um, and then also what I did in my life to mitigate some of the negative effects that it brought, particularly in my early teenage years, growing up and forming an identity. Um, my second was my Harvard's uh, first prompt, which was to brief, briefly elaborate. My second was Harvard's first prompt, which was to briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities or work experiences. And so for this one, I chose to write about my involvement on Discord and making Discord bots and servers. And this was a hobby for me that slowly turned into more of like an extracurricular activity and work experience. Um, but this prompt was pretty short, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, the third was Harvard's second prompt, which is uh, along the lines of your intellectual life may extend beyond the academic requirements of your school. Please use this space to list additional activities that you haven't mentioned or detailed elsewhere. So in this question, I elaborated on some of my research because I haven't really detailed that anywhere else. Um, I provided a somewhat chronological series of some of the different research efforts I was a part of in high school, including most recently my experience at the Research Science Institute. And the number four was the optional prompt. And for this one, I chose to write about a topic of my own choice. Um, and so basically, 
I started out with this fun expository story and then walked through three activities of mine, um, which were Boy Scouts, my involvement in the Samyak Science Society, and then science research. And I ended the essay tying it back to my goals and future. So overall, the essay was really focused on my long-term goals and the impact that I want to create um, in the future. Okay, that's it for this one. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and make sure to subscribe for more videos on this subject. Now watch the next video on the screen, which is my acceptance reaction video. So that's definitely a pretty cool one. Go watch it right now.